Hey everyone, welcome to the Shake Me Awake podcast with Jen. It's taken me 40 years to finally wake up to my true potential, my authenticity, my purpose, and my passion in life. I can't go back to sleep and I want you to wake up with me. Every week we'll be talking about the journey of opening your eyes to the life you were meant to lead, how to show up as the real you in this one life we've been given, how to live more authentically, and how to find your true purpose instead of sleepwalking through life like so many of us are doing. I want you to wake up every day filled with purpose and passion and show up as the true you because otherwise, life is exhausting. I am committed to living each day authentically and with true purpose, and I want you to join me. Follow this podcast and visit my website at shakemeawake.com. Be part of a community of people who are done sleeping through life. So my guest today is someone I really need in my life, uh, especially when it feels like I'm running in a hundred different directions and can't seem to get enough accomplished. Her name is Valerie Recor, and she's a productivity specialist, time management expert, podcast host, and a mom. So she has some really great insight, not only as a professional and expert in this area, but with her own real life examples that she uses in her life with her family. She talks about how to have conversations with your family or ask questions of yourself around how you want to show up in your life, aligning your priorities, and what you commit to with the kind of life you want to live, and how to focus more on what it is you're allowing to take your time versus getting everything done. Valerie gives us some actionable tips we can take right out of the podcast and implement, especially as so many of us are shifting into a completely different type of time, time management as school starts back up. And for me, as my youngest starts high school, which will be a new adventure for her and also for us as she's the only girl, the youngest, and my last baby. I hope you get some really great information and enjoy Valerie's calming energy. I was looking at your website and then, uh, so I look at people's websites when they sign up for the podcast interview, but then I always look at it again, right before I sit down, just to kind of familiarize myself and I'm looking at it and I'm reading everything about like moms being so busy and so pressured and like, you know, it's almost a badge of honor to be like, I'm just so busy. I have so much going on as I've run home from my full-time job, stuffed my face really quick, you know, <laughs> trying to get the dog put away. <laughs> so it's like, I can't wait to talk to her. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I get that. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> if you don't mind, go ahead and introduce yourself and kind of what you're up to and how you got into it. So I am Valerie Recor, the owner of Stride Productivity, and I am a productivity and time management expert. And I help moms um, essentially gain a sense of control, spend time with their kids and end their days feeling at peace. And there's a big focus on the mental load of motherhood, um, which is like having 800 tabs open in your brain all the time, <laughs> right? You know, the dishwasher gets emptied and the clothes get washed and folded and put away. And nobody really knows how all this magic happens because it happens it just magically happens, apparently. Um, and I came to this work um, through years of partly loving productivity and just like reading books about time management. I love Laura Vanderkam books. I love Julie Morgenstern books and um, applying all of that to my own life and listening to friends talk about how busy they are like it is a badge of honor. And me, you know, you ask somebody how they're doing and they say, oh, I'm so busy. And my kid had four birthday parties this weekend and a soccer game and all of this other stuff. And they're like overwhelmed, but also sounding like, well, this is just the way life is. And, or of course, this is how I want to be living my life. And I never quite understood if that was true or we just feel like we have to be that busy. And I just feel like we could do better. Or at the very least, make sure that what we are doing that is keeping us so busy is important to us as a family mm -hmm. and individuals and not what society is telling us that we should be focused on. Mm, that's so great. I love that you gave some resources, some author names, um, because I was definitely going to ask about that. When you were talking, I was like, yeah, that's pretty much my life. Uh, <laughs> you know, I run around like crazy 
-hmm. to the extent that my car is probably the best example of, I just throw everything in my car because I'm always on the go. You know, there's snacks in my car. There's water bottles in my car. There's like three purses in my car full of things. If I'm going to this place versus this place versus this place. Um, oh my gosh, for someone who is in that and that's who you help, right? What is like the, what do you start with for somebody who comes to you and they're like, this is my life. I need a change and I don't know how to change it. Mm -hmm. So it starts with a couple of different things. One, it could be a time audit where you track your time for a good week. Um, and by tracking my, your time, I don't mean like at the end of the day, you sit down and write down what you think you did all day, mm -hmm. but in 30, 60 minute increments, you stop what you are doing and you jot down what you are doing because it can be incredibly eye opening. And you might think that you are super busy, but really you're on social media half that time, or you are running a bunch of errands. I had a client who, when she did her time on it, we realized how many times she was running into the grocery store during the week. <laughs> and it'd be, you know, to pick up one or two things versus uh -huh. like, let's figure out how to streamline this so that you go in once a week and you buy the things you know you are going to need and save yourself a bunch of time and stress. And so you start with a time audit coupled with um, really looking at what your values and your goals are, like what is important to you as a person, to you and your family. If that feels way too big and scary, what do you want the season to look like? So my family is heading in. My kids start school in a week from when we're recording this. We are starting to talk about what do we want this fall semester to look like and to feel like. And what does that mean? How are we spending our time? What are our priorities? And then you make sure that you are moving towards those priorities. And you might not be able to you know, overhaul your life quickly, but it might be you know, our family has gotten a little lazy this summer. And so one of our goals is to move our body more. And for us, that might be just walking around the block after dinner to, okay, I'm going to pick up my daughter after school and we're going to go take a walk and it's mm -hmm. going to be a little bit longer walk. And so really looking at what is important to you and your family and where do you want to go and then start taking little steps to get there. That makes so much sense. I talk a lot about, you know, wanting to live a life that's in alignment with my authenticity, my, my core, my values. And so that's really kind of what you're speaking to. It's just asking yourself, are all these things you're doing? My parents are semi-retired and I joke with them that they're more busy than I've ever seen them in their lives. Mm -hmm. And some of the things they complain about doing, it's like, it's like we fill whatever, you know, if we get paid a certain amount, we can manage to spend that much. If we have a certain amount of time, we figure out how to fill it, you know, unless we've done what you're talking about, which is evaluate. And, and that's something I feel like we don't do a lot as a culture. We react and we, we, you know, fill our schedules with all this stuff versus doing exactly what you're talking about, which is sitting down. Maybe it's a monthly thing. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's like you said, quarterly or whatever. What's the season um, where we sit down and go, okay, what do I want the next month mm -hmm. to look like? What do I want to accomplish? Uh, absolutely. Cause I can feel huge, right? Like, Hey, why don't you do a time audit and then sit down and discuss your values? And you're like, <laughs> who has that kind of time? Like I got to get dinner on the table and I have all these 12 other things that I need, you know, need to happen, laundry, shopping, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so we don't think we have that time. Mm -hmm. So take even just 10 minutes, talk about it with your family over dinner. Just sit down and talk about it with your partner for five minutes, take a walk around the block and think about it. Um, I just posed the, the question to my family the other night and I said, we don't, don't answer this right now. I want you just to think about it. And we did start talking about it a little bit, but it was kind of just like, let's all start thinking about it. And in a couple of weeks, we'll come back together and really maybe dive into it. And it doesn't have to be this big, long you know, weekend retreat where you're going to overhaul <laughs> everything. It can just be a quick, you know, things don't feel right for me. What's going on? What can, is there one small step, one change 
that I can start making right now and then layer it on over time. It doesn't have to be huge because I, I get that can feel very overwhelming and like, like, I don't have time for this. I can yeah. hear, I can hear everybody out there. <laughs> uh-huh. You know, all of our excuses, I'm sure <laughs> you've heard them all. Well, I think it's so great that you're building that into your family and with your kids. Um, I have a 14 year old daughter who's about to start high school. Mm -hmm. And I do worry a little bit at the example I have given her because I work full time plus take care of her part time. Uh, Her dad and I are divorced. Plus, I'm st- I've am i started three businesses. I got this podcast. I'm getting my coaching certificate. I own a resale shop. And she sees me constantly just go, 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 go. Mm-hmm. So from your perspective, what are some things that I can do to try to model better behaviors in sort of this realm and also thinking about helping her learn to be organized as she starts high school when she, when she's, when I am her mother. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I mean, I think asking that question is really like the first part of that, right? It's that awareness. Um, I would, I think talking about it with her, I'm a fan of talking with people about all, with kids about all of this stuff. Um, I think, you know, even talking about it when you feel like you are overwhelmed and not doing it right. Like, Hey, I know I've been really busy and distracted lately. Here's why. And here's, you know, maybe something I'm working on going, you know, what something that you're going to do. Um, or maybe you love being this busy. Maybe you love having all of this stuff together and you still feel like you get to spend time with her when you are together. And she gets to see that too. And she can see you, being able to put aside all of this stuff that you are enjoying, all of these activities and the businesses and spending time with her. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think talking about it is really the biggest thing. I love that. That's, that's good because, you know, in not only just in society, but for my own growth and the things that I am working towards, I also think there's positivity in her seeing a role model who's going after, like I'm going after my dreams. Mm -hmm. And it took me a long time to get to the point where I stopped giving up on my own dreams. Mm -hmm. Um, So I do like modeling that for her, but I, I love what you said about just having that open conversation with her about this is why I do it. And maybe even asking her, you know, how do you feel about it? Are there Mm -hmm. ways that I could make sure that I'm, you know, making time for you or that, that we're, um, or that I'm helping her focus on learning how to be organized. Um, Mm -hmm. I already know that she's the type, you know, I've got 15 different ways that I keep planners. I've got the written planners and I've got the Trello board on my computer and I've got the reminders in my, in my phone, like, because I can get so distracted that if I don't have multiple ways (laughs) to, to remind me, and I see her starting to, you know, telling me that she wanted me to buy her a planner for starting high school. And Mm -hmm. I want to, help her learn how to be organized. So what would be your advice to a young teenager? Sounds like you've got kids who are at the age where they can start thinking, be thinking about these things too. What's your advice? Yeah, I think it is um, experimenting. So Mm -hmm. having those conversations with her, if she's going into high school, what does she want this year to look like? Mm -hmm. My oldest is going into middle school. So this is a whole new thing for us too. And it's really, okay, what do we want? what do we want to do? Right. It's kind of, I really am encouraging her to pick one of the clubs. So I want you to join a club. Um, Their school is very big on, if you don't have a club you want to join, let's start one. And so it's sort of that, like, let's, you know, focus on something um, to get you involved. Um, Playing with it. I mean, I, I'm a huge, I'm a paper planner person. And for years I would stand in the aisle at Target trying to find the perfect planner. And I realized eventually the perfect planner doesn't exist. It's all this work that we're doing as to what goes in the planner that makes it magic. 
And then I did finally find a planner that I love. And I do also use reminders and I use Evernote and like occasionally I, I love a good post-it note. Like I, I like my, I'm a very visual person. So things get lost on my computer. It has to be written down on my planner if it's going to happen. But other people might be very digital. They might want um, everything in their phone or everything in a specific app that they can access on their multiple devices, if that's a thing. So have her play with that and see what works and knowing that it might change. Yeah. So my husband and I have tried to share apps before. Hey, let's do all of our groceries here and do our meal planning. It lasts about a week and then we forget <laughs> that we have it. Yes. And then it doesn't happen anymore. Like we can't get there. But mm -hmm. I know other people, that's how they function. Um, we may end up there someday when both of our kids are teenagers and everybody's going multiple directions. Right now, things are a little more simple. Yeah. Um, so you have to play around with it and just see what works and then evaluate. Again, it's that coming back six weeks from now going, okay, is this working for me? Yes or no? What can we improve? Um, and making those tools work for you. Mm -hmm. So don't let your planner run your life, make sure that you're, you're doing the work that what belong, what is in your planner belongs there, not just this is everything and you're not evaluating what's supposed to be there. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Just continuing to, you know, fill the time mm -hmm. without stopping and evaluating. I really like that. I think that's really helpful. Um, so, and that may be your advice to my next question, which was going to be, for someone who ha struggles with focusing on a particular thing, um, in fact, I was just talking to a writer friend of mine, and I said, and we were asking each other how you know what our word counts were, and I'm like, oh well, I have one story that has this word count, but then I started working on this other story, and now I have this word count on that story, <laughs> and so. My question for you is for somebody who has a very hard time focusing and gets mm. distracted very easily, what is some advice that you might have? Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I think there's, if you are moving forward on those stories and, you know, if you're kind of bouncing back and forth and that works for you, then I say, continue doing that. Don't change what's working if you are moving forward on stuff. Um you know, I know sometimes it can be good, nice to have a partner where, you know, somebody wants to finish, start something and then somebody else can bring it home, which is harder in a writing, right? Like somebody can't really sit down and finish the story for you. Um, but I know there are people who love the the beginnings of things, but not necessarily the closers. Um, I feel like that's a Gretchen Rubin Thing. she gets into like do you like to open a box of crackers or do you like to finish a box of crackers like, <laughs> I love to finish things because I like to check stuff off my list oh, um funny. and so knowing that and working within that working within your energy um and then if you need to play games and gamify it or motive motivate yourself in certain ways figuring out what that might be like do you want to check off a box every day and you get this chain of check marks because you've written every day? Does it matter if you're finishing stories or do you need to give yourself a deadline of I need to finish this story or I cannot go write this one story I really want to write until I finish this other one because I need to get that done. Um, so working with who you are and what works and playing with it. Again, it's that experimentation of you know, it works for me might not work for you and it might not work for your friend. So kind of playing around to see um, what gets you motivated and excited to do something. Yeah, I like that. And I think that because uh, I heard today I was listening to a podcast and, and somebody said that one of their tricks was to uh, give themselves a reward Mm -hmm. of some kind, whether that's walking in nature, it doesn't have to be like a food reward or a, or something you bought or whatever. It can be anything that feels good and, and, mm -hmm. um, is an incentive to finish the thing. And so I like the idea of just maybe I could see myself doing some research on what are all the different strategies that, that are kind of out there that people are talking about? Cause right now you can access that stuff so easily mm -hmm. oh, yeah. and, and then just doing some tests, some experiments and yeah. see what sticks for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It's that playing with it and seeing what, what gets you motivated. 
Yeah, I like that. And I have another friend who is a coach and he says, you know, keep it fun. Mm -hmm. Find fun ways because that's a part of it. I think people can be really hard on themselves mm -hmm. and you probably experience that with people who come to you, um, you know, any kind of coach or counselor, even like a financial coach. I, I remember a time going into their office and handing them my accounts and just starting bawling. Like you're just, there are times when you feel like you've broken something or that you're broken and you go to somebody for help and you're in this space um, what's some advice for helping people through that and to get to a point where they can be a little gentler on themselves about it? Mm, yeah. I think trying to give ourselves grace, I think our society is so big into perfection and productivity and like getting it right all the time. And especially as women, I'm definitely a recovering people pleaser. I feel that in myself when I, you know, put out something that I'm just like, am I going to get in trouble for saying this thing? Social media is going to hate me mm. or, you know, oh, I, does it even make sense? Like would the grammar police come and get me for it? Like that perfectionist people pleaser runs deep. Right. And I know her, like I've, we're working on this. And so learning how to give ourselves grace and that reminding ourselves that we're not perfect and that we are going to mess up and that is okay. And sitting with it, if that's what you need to do is just taking some time to just kind of wallow, mm. you know, go watch your favorite Netflix show and just take a break and, or take a walk around the block or find something, you know, wallow in it and then find something that will help get you out of that. Mm. Um, but I think we need to just, and I, I say this like it's easy. Like I, I fully understand that none of this is easy. Um, but just knowing that that, that societal conditioning runs deep mm -hmm. and that we are human and we're going to mess up and that's okay. Mm -hmm. And I need to hear that regularly as well, as much as I would, you know, share that with somebody else. Like I certainly struggle with it too. Of course. I mean, it's like anything just because we're saying, here's my advice, or for me, if I'm coaching somebody, it doesn't mean I'm excused from having those same types of things happen in my life or that I haven't already been through them. Mm -hmm. um, it's nice to hear that other people are also not perfect and that they give permission for you to just wallow in it. Um, sometimes that is the best thing I can do in a moment is go watch a movie that makes me cry my eyes out. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it releases so much when I do the activity that does that for me. Mm -hmm. So I think it's great for people to find whatever activity that is. I haven't tried the somatic stuff yet, but I keep seeing it on my feed. So somebody's trying to tell me I need it in my life. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I keep hearing a lot about these different ways to release mm -hmm. because we do, we hold it in and we hide it and we push it down and we mm -hmm. just, Oh, we just walk around with it all the time and it's yeah. very unhealthy. Um, so I think that's the best advice. What you said is, is to know that it's okay to release it, to wallow in it a little bit, um, to feel it is really mm -hmm. the thing. Yeah. And then, and then find healthy ways to cope with it. Um, and sometimes it is just identifying, okay, this is making me feel this way. Mm -hmm. That is a signal to myself. Our feelings are signals mm -hmm. that this isn't feeling good in, in my body. This isn't feeling good in my life anymore. And that's a signal for me. Thank you, body, for giving me that signal. Mm -hmm. Now, what do I do with that signal? Um, so being a business owner and a mom and a wife, how do you prioritize self-care and what are, what is some advice you have for that? Yeah, I feel like we could have a whole other conversation about <laughs> self-care. Um, so I, my favorite book related to self-care is by a woman named Pooja Lakshman. She really yeah. gets into kind of how self-care is not just bubble baths and pedicures and massages. And I love her take on it because it is very much 
like having boundaries in our life, learning to say no. Um, the work that I do with my clients, I very much believe is self-care. We focus a lot on the mental load of motherhood, a lot on how to share that with your family and your partner. And for me, all of that is self-care because it's really getting into that. How do we live a life that is important and authentic to us. And so you're not late, you're going to a yoga class or you're going to get a pedicure or a massage because that fits in with feeling good and taking care of yourself, but isn't the like, life is super stressful and then I'm gonna get a massage and it's gonna fix everything. It's the, all of these other tools that we're putting into place. So how do we make sure that we are living into our values? How are we saying no to all of the requests that come at us all the time um, to you know, getting in and boundaries and that could be so much deeper, but really just like, how do, how are we really living our life in a way that feels good to us? And for me, that is a much deeper self-care than life is stressful. I'm just going to go have a weekly massage to deal with it. Mm -hmm. um, so getting the massages, if you want them, but they're less, they're sort of a bonus care, if you will. Um, I, to be honest, I'm still working on all of that in my own life, really, okay. um, really figuring out what that means. But I, I do think I have gotten better in the last few years at just saying no to things I don't want to do, teaching my kids how to say no to things they don't want to do. Um, knowing that when we do say yes, we're saying no to something else. So making sure that yes is a heck yes. Mm -hmm. And really looking at what's important to us and how do we step into that? Love that because it really is more of a holistic. There's not one thing that's going to fix it. Like, yeah, maybe I can seek out learning how to do this somatic stuff and maybe that will help one piece of it, mm -hmm. but it is all part of a bigger picture. Um, it's like you said at the beginning, you know, moving my body more, that's a piece of it. And Something I've talked about in leadership in, in my real job, I, you know, I've been a, a supervisor for 15 years. And something I talk about with that is every day trying to show up and asking myself, how can I add value as a leader today? Mm -hmm. That's like the number one question that I, I tell leaders to ask themselves, because one day it might be by going to Office Depot and making an emergency paper run because your staff is short and, you know, it, it would be helpful to them if you as the boss went and got the paper that day. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's what adding value looks like. Sometimes it's bringing a cake to a, a team birthday party. Sometimes it's disciplinary action. So, you know, there's all different ways that leaders can add value. And so when I think about it in terms of self-care and what you've sort of set the foundation for, which is first understanding what is in alignment with you and your values and the life that you want to create. Mm -hmm. And then every day, in fact, hour by hour, sometimes it may be different what adding value to your self-care mm -hmm. looks like. How do you help people work through and what, what are some tips on dealing with disappointment? Because I know for me, especially when I'm trying to be better mm -hmm. at something, you know, whatever it is, walking more, eating better foods, not shopping as much, whatever it is, um, I can be really hard on myself when I don't meet my own goals or I, I don't see the results that I set, I told myself I was going to try to reach. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, as business owners, right, we fail in public all the time, <laughs> right? We launch to crickets. I'll put out a podcast episode or newsletter, or Facebook post that like, I swear is going to just, people are going to love it because it's slightly controversial and we're going to talk about it. And it's like crickets, right? I'm like, how did nobody love this? How did nobody want to listen to this? Like, what is going on here? <laughs> and I mean, coming back to what we were talking about earlier is just sitting with that, really that like giving ourselves grace, we are human, we are not perfect. We are going to screw up. And 
wallowing in that for a little bit and then picking ourselves up and trying again tomorrow. Um, usually if I can get a good night's sleep, I can bounce back a little bit the next day, learning something from it. Okay. What went wrong? Um, oh, three people saw this social media post. This is why nobody cared. <laughs> uh -huh. I get to use it again sometime soon. <laughs> sort of what can we learn from that? Like learn from those mess that from what happened, maybe it's just life just happened and there isn't necessarily a lesson to be learned. Um, but just sitting with that and, and, you know, especially with kids, I think sitting with them and their disappointment and teaching them that this is just part of it. And sometimes we just need a good cry or a good, I don't know, I like my kickboxing workouts because sometimes I just need to punch things. My kids call <laughs> it punching the air. I'm like, yeah, sometimes I just need to like work out this frustration and then I know I'm going to feel better. Yeah. I need to move my body. And mm -hmm. just kind of shake that energy out of it. Mm -hmm. And then we can regroup. Mm -hmm. um, and I think just knowing that it's a part of life and coming back to, again, that conditioning of perfectionism mm -hmm. runs deep. And we're we're going to experience disappointment and we're going to mess up. And it sucks. None of us want it, but we just kind of have to sit with it. Or think about what you would tell a friend if you were sitting across at, you know, at the table drinking tea and she's sharing something with you and she's super disappointed, what would you tell her? Mm. Can you turn that on yourself and treat yourself that's with that same compassion? Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. Tell me about your podcast. So it's a private podcast. Um, and it is every episode is like five minutes long. And my goal is to just make it quick and easy and it's um, titled In the School Pickup Line because you can listen to it while you're sitting in the I school love it. line. Um, this is the first year I'm going to have to start sitting in one and I'm kind of dreading it. Actually, I think there's a way I can avoid it, but I, it may happen. It's just I get into kind of everything that we talked about today and just kind of how to put all of this stuff into practice in your life. Talk about the Target planner aisle. Oh, I love that aisle. <laughs> <laughs> what a great name. I love it. Um, so tell everybody where they can find you. Yeah. So you can find me at strideproductivity.com. Um, the, the private podcast is strideproductivity.com forward slash school pickup. And then you can also find me on social media at stride productivity. Awesome. I love it. This has been so great. I have loved talking to you. Um, part of my whole productivity plan was making these 30 minute episodes because mm -hmm. I could not get the hour to work. Um, <laughs> yeah. So this 30 minutes has been absolutely wonderful. I've stuck with it. I've <laughs> ramped up my podcasting because of the 30 minute time slots. It's just, it's like a mental thing too. Mm -hmm where I might have two 30 minutes in one night, but for some reason that works where the hour was not working for me. Yeah. 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 So, awesome. yeah. So it's been great. And I've loved our conversation and I love what you're doing. It's amazing. I'm going to follow and hopefully learn a lot more from you. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you for having me. Hey everyone. I just want to thank you so much for joining me on this podcast. Make sure to follow or subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. So you get notified of new episodes. Also, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and sign up for my newsletter at shakemeawake.com. I hope you'll tune in again. <laughs>